Is it going to be enough to support that broader index by the close? It does look like it is going to be a good session for the Australian share market. And I guess one of the key things to watch is volume. We haven't been able to break that $4 billion mark all week. On Monday, we traded $3.7 billion of stock. On Tuesday, $3.5. And on Wednesday, $3.4 billion. Today should be a little bit better because we do see a single stock expiry for June. So that should help volumes today, but mostly tomorrow. And of course, the countdown to the end of financial year. This is the second last session of the financial year. So we should see some portfolio portfolio shuffling and end of uh, end of financial year tax loss selling as well so that should help volumes just in comparison to volumes last year the last week of the financial year the last one we saw volumes of between four to five point five billion dollars so that gives you an idea of how slow th things have been this week in terms of the market I think it's a case of just fatigue over focusing over the EU summit we know that the EU summit is tonight as well as tomorrow and this is in the face of rising 10-year bond yield we saw the Spanish yield rising once again, 6.9%, and the Italian bond yields also rising slightly overnight to 6.2%. So the market's trying to see how they can get some of these borrowing costs for these countries down, and that's going to be a, a key to watch in the coming weeks because the, the, the borrowing costs are now at dangerous levels. But the U.S., of course, with a positive performance up by 0.9%, our market should do well on the back of copper prices and oil prices, which were up by around about 1%. So our, our energy sector should do well. Oil prices have been doing extremely well over the last few sessions. And in terms of corporate news, we'll be watching AGMs, uh, at, at Aurora Oil and Gas, as well as Hillgrove have their AGMs. And we also see Northern Star with the shareholder. Met Cash's results and uh, believe that the acquisition is indeed, uh, as he said, what do you make of the move? The concern in the market is that we are seeing Metcash's underlying business deteriorate. So in the face of that, I guess they have one of two choices. They can do nothing and just watch their business deteriorate, or they can be quite aggressive and try to buy growth. And I think this is what they're trying to do here. There's really three key challenges that Metcash is face facing. One is uh, for all of the supermarkets, and that's the continuing deflation as well as the savings cost conscious consumer. But the other factor is the increased competition that we are seeing out of Woolworths and Coles. And this is continuing and this continues to be a bit of a drag for Metcash. If we have a look at what they're forecasting in the current financial year, they are forecasting just low to mid single digit growth. And if we have a look at the current results that they've come out with today, they've seen underlying growth of just two and a half percent. That's an absolutely dismal result. So I guess some of these acquisitions are around trying to buy growth and they're, they're looking at a capital raising to fund mostly those acquisitions. So they're looking at $325 million through an institutional raising and then an extra $50 million through uh, the share purchase plan. So a total of about $375 million. It isn't a large discount. It's about a 7.5% discount. So that's the floor, the underwritten floor price for the Insto uh, capital raising. So not a huge discount to the last trader price. But if we have a look at where that money is going to be spent, uh, automotive brands, that's about $72 million. The Mitre 10 acquisition, that was expected because they had, an, uh, they had an option to acquire the rest that they didn't have there. So $67 million there. And then bolt-on acquisitions that they haven't really specified of about $90 million. Now, they have said that these are expected to be earnings per share accretive, so they are looking to buy growth there. But then there's another $100 million worth of costs associated with automating their distribution centers, some of the corporate costs involved, as well as the cost of these acquisitions. So a large chunk of this money going towards that as well. So altogether, Metcash's announcement, I guess uh, another area which has been struggling in the face of increased competition, as well as cyclical pressures as well, and they're just trying to buy their way uh, out of the situation and trying to buy